Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to show you guys how to code an auto clicker in Linux or in Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So in case you guys missed it on my previous video, I actually made an auto clicker using the Raspberry Pi Pico as a human interface device. Now in the Raspberry Pi Pico auto clicker video, and as well as the other videos that I made with the code with me series, you guys took a large interest on what I was showing and how I was explaining everything. So I'm going to continue more with the series and get bigger and bigger projects along with coding. Since the last auto clicker video was pretty popular, I decided to remake this using just Linux. Now you can do this on a Raspberry Pi. I actually coded this originally on a Raspberry Pi itself, but I just transitioned into using my desktop instead. And it only supports Android. So sorry for you iPhone users. So what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is a simple code using shell script along with screen copy to send the screen over to your desktop and then we could interact with it this way. What's different from this and the Pico is that instead of using a HID device like a mouse cursor, uh, we are actually mimicking touch events. And some games like Tap Titans don't allow for mouse clicking, which means the Raspberry Pi Pico auto clicker won't work on that game. But using this method, we'll be able to actually override that and act as a touch event. So to begin, we're gonna jump over to my desktop. And if you guys don't have code installed yet, I would recommend using it. Uh, Visual Studio Code is actually a very, very pretty editor and it's very easy to use. I just freshly installed it on my desktop. So I am gonna configure something with it. Another thing we need to do is actually install a couple of programs. And I will have a GitHub of this, the software that we're gonna be installing as well as the code that we are gonna be using. This way it's easier for you guys to copy and paste or follow along on what I'm doing. First thing we need to do is install screen copy. And to do that, we would do sudo snap install scrcpy. Now, if you wanna know more information about screen copy, I actually did a full video on that. And again, I'll leave a link on the top left so you could check that out. But as for now, that's how you install screen copy. Next thing we need is to install xdo tool and x automation. XDO tool will allow me to fetch the active window and X automation will allow me to uh, mimic the mouse to click events or keyboard events. So once we have those installed, we are set. I could close this out and we are ready to use our Visual Studio code. Now I'm gonna hit a new file and first thing I'm gonna do is save it somewhere that I'll remember. So it's gonna be in my documents and I am just gonna call this click.sh. Now, because I saved it as an sh file, it's gonna know that it is a shell script. Uh, next thing I wanna do has nothing to do with this video, but I would actually like to use the Dracula theme. The Dracula theme makes it everything look much better for my scheme right now. You see how it's purple and everything? So yeah, let's, let's install that just in case because uh, it makes it look a lot better. So I'm gonna keep it as Dracula. And now I can go back into my code and here we have it. So since this is a shell script, shell script oh my god why am i getting tongue tied from that uh we need to start off with bin sh so that's what we know it's a shell script and if we were going to change it to something like a bash script it would be like that so we're going to be using shell script and i'm going to set up some variables so i'm going to do x prop command equals which x prop so which is an actual command that you can run into in your terminal. So if I was to do which xdo tool, it'll actually reply with the location of the actual program. And that's what I'm doing here. It's actually filling it out because sometimes it might not be in user bin. It might be in user local share bin or something like that. Or somewhere else, I am just populating this variable with the actual location of the software. Then I'm gonna do xdo tools tool command equals which xdo tool then next is xte command equals which xte so xprop will actually allow me to uh, pull up the class or the type of uh, window that we are looking into xdo tools will actually uh, populate the actual window itself so uh, the active window and then XTE is the actual mimic of the mouse click and the keyboard. So um, we need to check those three programs. And instead of having to type out the location of each one, I put it into a variable. Now, first off, we're gonna do while, and then we're gonna do a do. 
So while basically it's gonna continuously loop and in here, we're gonna do if, and then we need these brackets, dash n x prop command. And dot n means that if it's if the string is not empty. So if this is not empty, uh, then continue. So it's basically some error correction checking. This way, if you didn't have the software properly installed, it will actually say, hey, you need to install it. Or it won't run actually. So dash a dash n um, xdo tool underscore command. And then we do that again, dash a dash n xte command all right now we could close this off and then we do then if i could type then all right now the first thing we need to do is get the active window if we don't do this step where it's basically going to constantly click as soon as we run the program and we don't want that because we'll be unable to do anything in the software so what we want to do is grab the window and as soon as it senses that the window is active so screen copy uh, then it will actually do click 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 a billion times we're going to name this variable active window id and we are going to be using the xdo tool command get active window okay and that basically runs this command, get active window, and populates this variable. So this is constant. It's gonna keep looping and looping and looping until you know, it's gonna get new windows. Next, we need to get the class of the window. I don't wanna know the name of the window, the class. Basically, if you have Firefox open, the title bar would say whatever, Google or whatever website you're on. But the actual class of that is Firefox. Same goes for screen copy if i was to plug in my phone it will actually say the phone name and not the software that i'm using which is screen copy and I, and that's called the class and what i'm trying to do is pull the class so i don't have to worry about the name of the actual window so in this case make a new variable called window class equals and at this point we're going to use x prop command id which is the id we just pulled dollar sign active window id and then we're going to pipe this into said and said is um what's the best way to explain it it allows you to pull what you want from a stream so this is like considered a stream so a stream edit or sed and basically if you put enough variables in there you could actually just extract the data that you want or extract the extract the text that you want okay so Again, this will be on my code or my, on my GitHub. So you can just copy and paste this. It's basically going to pull the class from our active window ID. Now that we got these two lines in and I'm able to define the actual class, we're now able to create the code that we need, which is going to be if window class equals, and then the our window class that we want, which is screen copy, then perform the task. So in this case, we would do xte command mouse click one and then we end this and then we also end this and then we do done so basically in about 16 lines of code uh, what this does is if we have all these commands that are available that means we installed through app get uh, we can now continue on with the code and this will actually get the active window, whichever one is clicked. So if I click this, it will get this active window. If I click Firefox, it will get this window. And then in that window, it will actually strip everything and just get the class name. And if, this is another if variable, if the class name is equal to screen copy, then perform the task of mouse click. Now, XTE is pretty popular. Uh, I could pull it up, XTE mouse. And if you pull up, uh, where is it? Maybe this one, die.net, yeah. Mouse XTE, it'll actually say, these are the commands you could use. Key, key down, key up, uh, mouse click, mouse move, mouse R move, which is relative move, mouse down, mouse up, and sleep. So if you wanted to make this more of a slower command, you could do mouse click one, sleep one and then mouse click one so it'll 
kind of like loop it with one second in between or something like that. So you could combine these commands with these. And if you want to use key functions, you would do it over here as well. And in our example, we're just gonna make a quick clicker, but I did see a lot of you guys uh, mention about swiping, you know, an automated swiping uh, tool, which is perfectly fine as well. So now I'm gonna save this and I am gonna pop my phone in and we could test out the code. A couple of things I wanna run uh, now that I am setting up everything is one, I am gonna run screen copy. And this will actually wait for my phone to connect. And over here is another prompt. Now, VS Code isn't that great with running shell. If you guys know an easier way or what plugin to install just to get this going, let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, I'm gonna try to get screen copy going. And it might, I might have to install ADB. sudo app install ADB. I figured Snap would just automatically have it, but I guess we would also have to install ADB. Okay, now that we have our phone connected, uh, this is basically it. If I click on the screen, it'll constantly just click and mimic what I need to do. So I'm gonna pop over to documents over here and chmod plus x click. So it makes it executable instead of having me to run shell or sh with the command. So now I could just run click. Okay, a little bit of an issue here. All right, uh, I was missing a couple of slashes over here, which I corrected. And uh, again, you can definitely find my code linked down in the description below. But now that we have everything all set over here, I'm gonna pull back into my desktop over here. And anytime if I was to click on this, Oh, you know what? I need to run the program first. So I'm gonna do click. And as soon as I click over, it's gonna automatically click on the screen, as you can see. Everywhere where I move my mouse, it's actually just gonna keep clicking. So in a sense, this game now just became a lot easier for me. And there is a lot more examples you could use this and you could expand on this. Especially if you're gonna design this in Python, you could use object detection like OpenCV or even using Tesseract OCR, on-screen character recognition. You could read the text that is on the screen and make a database out of it or whatever you want. There's so much you could do and so much possibilities you could expand this project to. And because you guys are showing a lot of interest in the Code With Me series, I plan on taking a lot bigger projects than just little mouse clicks like this and possibly doing OCR or OpenCV and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, that is it for coding a little thing in Shell Script to get a clicker working for my Android games. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, Hack till it hurts.